What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So I'm just getting back to the crib uh, from uh, leaving the studio. Shout out to everyone that was a part of the live stream tonight for the go home show of SmackDown for uh, this year's upcoming SummerSlam. Shout out to Chiseled, Unchiseled Adonis. Uh, shout out to the homie uh, Trill Billy for pulling up. And the homie uh, Steve, Sir Dance a lot. The whole crew was there for this SmackDown. And it, shout out to everyone that was a part of the stream on YouTube and on Twitch. We had a good time, which means we're going to have an even better time tomorrow for SummerSlam. Enjoyed SmackDown for what happened on the show, but we got to talk about the, the most noticeable things, the most important stuff that happened on this show. So we started off SmackDown with uh solo and uh cody having their promo interaction uh, solo came out there cody came out there and you heard well cody came out there first and then you heard solo uh come out there and he had a lot of like boos there was a lot of people chanting uh we want roman over his theme song over his theme music you can hear the crowd chanting really loud we want roman and even when the theme music came off, they were chanting. This is probably the loudest I've heard them say, we want Roman. Because I think a lot of people feel that SummerSlam, he may return. And then that's when, uh, you know, Solo starts getting into his little stick of, well, not even his. It's Roman's. Like, hey, Cleveland, you know what I'm saying? Acknowledge me. And Cody's over here looking at him like, all right, man, people booing him. So they get into their promo. <laughs> and essentially, Cody made it be known like, I get it. You're in a very tough position. You know, you you are the self-appointed tribal chief. Like, you know, this is, this is something really big for you, you know. And... Solo wasn't even trying to hear it. He was looking at his nice little iced out watch, his nice top piece, and you know Solo got the drip now. He's like, are we done? Did you come out here to bore me? I, I really don't give a damn. You know, I like I I really don't care. You know, Cody's like, you know, I, I beat I beat the real tribal chief. You know, I beat the tribal chief, the one that you're pretending to be. I beat him already. You know, I I, I beat him in bloodline rules. And then that's when Solo was like, man, to keep it a hundred. And this is where they just plan. They've been planting the seeds of Roman's return. He said to keep it a hundred with you. Um, the only reason why you beat Roman, because Roman wasn't man enough. He, he was he was he was a shell of himself. He essentially called him trash like you beat you beat a sorry or uh, a uh, Roman Reigns. He wasn't he wasn't me. You beat him, but he wasn't as good as me. Now, now Solo's feeling himself, essentially. You beat someone that's not as good as me. You know what I'm saying? And now he's getting to that point where he's openly disrespecting Roman, saying, you beat a trash individual. He's not as good as me. He's not as aggressive as me. He's not as dangerous as me. You beat someone that was weak. You not beating me. And then, all of a sudden, you see the camera show a spotlight of, Jacob Fatu coming through the crowd, then Tama Tonga coming through the crowd, then Tonga Loa coming through the crowd, and they're all circling in on the ring, and that's when he brings up the point, because early in the promo, Cody said, I beat the bloodline and bloodline rules at WrestleMania, so whatever you talking about, it don't matter, I know I can beat you, essentially, because I did that to Roman. The real tribal chief. So he said, since you want to bring up, bring up uh, bloodline rules, put put your money where your mouth is at. As they're surrounding the ring. Now put your money where your mouth at. How about at SummerSlam, we make this match a bloodline rules match. Since you, since you beat, since you won the championship, you beat Roman in a bloodlines rule match. How about you do that with B? And, of course, you know Cody was going to say yes because Cody's a dumb baby face. But, of course, he was going to say yes. But I like how he set this up. He told Tama Tonga, I'm not scared of you. Tonga Loa, I'm not scared of you. And then he went to Jacob Fatu. He pointed at him. And I love what he did with him. He didn't just say, I'm not scared of you. He's like, 
I'm probably, this is probably going to be something stupid to say because he knows and everyone else knows Jacob Fatu is him. He's like, I know this is probably going to be stupid to say, but I'm not scared of you either, you stupid son of a bitch. I was like, all right, Cody. That was a dumb thing to say, but Cody, you're standing on business. I love how he did that. And he basically said, you know what? Fine. Bloodline rules is on. I I agree to it. Let's let's make this match a bloodlines rules match. But I want you to understand one thing. I beat the real tribal chief. I did what I needed to do. I'm not worried about everybody else. All I need to do on Sun on Saturday is to beat this wannabe tribal chief. And I love that. He made it very clear. I beat the real tribal chief at WrestleMania. All I'm, I don't need to worry about anybody else. I'm, I'm good. All I need to do is beat the wannabe tribal chief on Saturday. And you thinking maybe the bloodline's going to get involved, but he tells everybody to leave because he solo thinks he has the upper hand here. So we get to the main event later on at the night. Uh, the tag team championships are put on the line. Um, and I love this promo they had. Yeah, Tommaso Ciampa walking backstage. They're doing the continuous shot. Then you had Johnny Gargano with his wife and his kid. And they're showing them in the background. Crowd's going crazy. He's hometown hero. You know, I'm. They, he's hyping up the crowd. I'm like, okay. They, they're giving us maybe a, a preview of him, you know, winning the DIY, winning this tag team because they're showing the family. No way they're going to lose, right? And a lot of us were expecting maybe Jimmy was going to get involved. Well, the match went on. Wish we could have seen more of it because of the damn commercial breaks, but it was a really good match. Definitely enjoyed it. But Jacob Fatu is him, and he showed it. There was a sequence towards the end of this match where Johnny Gargano is essentially by himself taking on all the members of the bloodline. It was giving me, if you guys remember... When he was facing the Undisputed Era by himself. And he ended up winning the, uh, the NXT Championship. When he was going against all. Damn near all of the members of Undisputed Era came out there. While he was facing Adam Cole. And he was just going crazy. That's what it was giving me. NXT vibes. So he's going crazy on the bloodline. Diving through the, through the ropes. He's putting on some good moves. And he hits Jacob Fatu with a move. That normally would put people down. But Jacob Fatu gets up. Essentially, like some some monster in the night, did no effect to him and proceeded to pack this nigga Johnny Gargano up with move after move after move after move after move. Love that little springboard where he hops up the top ropes and does that does the uh, the flip off the top ropes. Like it's just it's just it's like everything was happening in one motion, bro. And it was so good and fluid to see because it's like, as you're watching one, he get hit with the Samoan drop and then he get hit with this move. Then he get hit with this move. Then he get hit with the dive off the top rope after he just got hit with the, the, the flip off the top rope. Like so many moves he's getting hit with. And then when it's over, you're like, I don't think he's kicking out of that. And guess what? Johnny Gargano didn't kick out of that. And we have new SmackDown Tag Team Champs, bro. I was shocked only because of the story that they they may have to tell here. I was not expecting this. I did not think they were going to just win. I thought Jimmy was going to return. I think a lot of us did. I thought there was going to be some shenanigans. But I think the story they're trying to tell us is to give us this idea that Cody can actually lose here. Because when you think about it, the image of now them having the tag titles, now Solo actually may have a, a better chance in a believability increase of him actually winning because they have the titles. So it only makes sense if Solo wins. Now, granted, obviously, when you really think about it in hindsight, it's not happening still. But I like the idea that they're teasing that element that maybe he could win because they put the tag titles on Solo. They're making this faction seem dominant. So 
With this being said, this changes things just a bit. And maybe it would have been too predictable if they didn't win. But this changes things just a bit. How does this change? I think we may get some type of... There may be some type of infighting with this new bloodline. Because I still don't think Solo's winning. It just it doesn't make sense for Cody to lose to Solo right now. No. It don't make sense for Cody to be losing anytime soon considering who he just beat at WrestleMania. It hasn't even been all like six months yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't think he's dropping the title right now. I don't even think he's dropping it till damn near next year's WrestleMania, a year long title reign. So I don't think that's even going to happen, but I will say this though. It creates an interesting story dynamic where you can be like, okay, say solo doesn't win. Roman Reigns returns. Everybody's shocked. And now there could be a situation where somebody defects or somebody moves over, you know, maybe switch sides or allegiances because it's like, if Solo doesn't win on Saturday, then it's like, well, wait a minute. You did the same thing that Roman did. So what makes you better of a tribal chief than Roman? Because Roman lost at, at, at WrestleMania. You lost at SummerSlam. But we won our matches. So I don't know. They can really do something there. I, 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 I'm I very surprised it does something with DIY. I really would have hoped they could have got that win or something. But I get they're trying to make the bloodline very dominant. Um, it's going to be interesting. Now things, they're trying to add a little bit of unpredictability to it. And I can appreciate that. But overall, I definitely enjoyed SmackDown. Comment down below. Let me know, man. How do y'all feel? I felt, uh, felt about the go-home show for SmackDown tonight. Uh, were you guys surprised that we now have new tag team champs in the bloodline? Did you guys see that coming? And where do you think the story is going to go leading out or, you know, leading into SummerSlam and, you know, their match, the main event match between Cody and Solo? How that's going to play out now? There's a good chance still that Solo doesn't win the championship. And now what's going to happen? Or do they pull the ultimate swerve, which I'll... I hope they don't, because that would be a disservice to Cody. <laughs> and have this nigga Cody actually lose to Solo, that would be crazy. But y'all let me know down below uh, what y'all think is going to happen. Appreciate all love support y'all showing on the channel. Roll to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.